And we are back with part 9 of the Age of Redemption 2017 mod by Javakas for Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Uh, last time we left off, we took out the uh, Viserog Castle. We easily breezed through it because there's nothing to pick up and there's nothing to vendor. So it was a very quick level. We are now in modern day, which kind of makes a big change in the game's pace. We are going to be using a lot of firearms pretty much the entire rest of the game. The firearm system has been completely redone for Age of Redemption, and through the 2017 version, a new ammo overhaul has been put into the game, which I will be demonstrating quite a bit going forward from here. Um, I did make a slight adjustment to the ammo, ammo overhaul, which is kind of the nice thing about the Age of Redemption mod. It is very easy to customize to your, per your preference of game. Uh, the ammo overhaul, basically what it does is it allows you to stack weapons. Let me go ahead and pick up the uh, pistol here. A metal sling that hurls deadly stones. It is simple to use, yet murderous beyond measure. I see that man has not rested in his quest to create ever more powerful weapons. Okay, as you can see, as soon as I started picking up some ammo here, I got a icon, which is the ammo stacking icon. We demonstrated this a while back for the arrows for the bow. For the ammo, it works a little bit different for the web for like pistols and stuff. Uh, by default, the ammo stacking works for just about everything. The only thing it doesn't work on from what I've experienced is pistol ammo. Uh, energy cells for the taser, assault rifle ammo, submachine gun ammo, basically magazines, which I kind of understand. It um, it doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't go like with more like real life terms where you would have an ammo stack up completely, um, you know. But for the sake of the game, the way I like to play is I like to help stack all the ammo so my inventory is not so cluttered and that's exactly what happens in modern day your your inventory since you're holding so many uh, magazines it gets frustrating because it's taking up all your inventory slots to pick up items so i went ahead and i went into the configuration uh files and i made it so all uh firearms ammunition stacks including the pistol ammo so as you can see i will go ahead and turn this on and you'll see all these three disappear into one stack. So now I have 11 or 33 shots of standard ammunition. Uh, one thing that is different though, incinerary ammo and standard ammunition will not stack, they will be different. So as we progress here, I'm going to be using the incinerary ammo on Kristoff and the standard ammo with Serena. So that's the plan. Uh, first things first, I'm kind of in a uh, bad situation here. I've got low uh, blood, so I'm going to use Thetha Vitae on at least one. It's instantly going to kill one of the humans. One thing to note, if you do kill a human with Thetha Vitae, you do not get experience for that kill. So I don't want to use it unless I absolutely have to. Uh, another thing is I'm going to be using Phantom quite a bit to run two additional basically phantom guns to help shoot enemies as I move through as well as Serena in the background. As for attributes and disciplines, I put most of everything into stamina. Um, lots of stamina for Serena here. Stamina is very important as you're moving into this point of the game because of what's called auto firing. In the Age of Redemption mod, certain weapons and certain mobs can turn on auto fire which does like a like a like an automatic fire of a weapon and each one of those projectiles can do a ton of damage to you so you want to have a lot of soak a lot of fortitude levels a lot of stamina so you're not going to instantly die to that other than that disciplines i got three phantom which i'm going to be using i did put some points into call lightning it is a very effective spell going forward Especially for this, I'm pretty sure it's going to one-shot these guys when I do use it. And like I said last time, I did have it on Serena in my last playthrough uh, that I did off-camera, but she rarely used it. So I'm going to be putting it to use. Other than that, um, 
Nothing else really for Kristoff. I do make sure he has Awaken because I don't have any Awaken scrolls now. And I also gave Awaken to Serena so they can kind of cover each other if one of them do go down. Serena, on the other hand, I have four Plague Wind, three Black Death. And that's about it. Still nothing to hand instructions or Lure of Flames yet. I'll probably eventually go there. But I wanted to make sure she had a lot of stamina going into this. So we're going to go ahead and proceed through this place. Um, this place isn't too difficult. I made sure to have a lot of heightened senses just in case I can't see through the invisibilities. And I'm not too worried about things. Uh, we'll see how it goes though. Knock on wood. Let's go and get going. Where am I? What sorcerer's abode is this? Aneska. I shall depart. Who is that? A vampire! Kill him! Back off, bloodsucker! I'm sending you to hell! <laughs> I do withdraw. Really close there, and that is what auto fire is. <laughs> As you can see, the uh, when they do fire some of these weapons, they will fire automatic fire at you, or semi-automatic fire at you, which will absolutely shred your health. Uh, I did kind of play that wrong. I didn't put up any buffs. I wasn't really thinking as I moved in there. I didn't think that was going to happen, but I will be a little more uh, safe going further. I'll make sure I get my buffs up here. And let's go and get Kristoff up, Kristoff up, excuse me, and we'll continue on. As you can see here, I got the incinerary on Kristoff, and I got the standard ammunition on uh, Serena here. And as I go, I'll put continue to give her the ammunition. And it's kind of nice because you can actually manage your ammo here on this bar, as well as reload manually if you need to. If you do right-click on the ammunition, it will reload the gun. And you can also swap ammo types if you click on that specific ammo. So kind of... A really cool feature here uh, makes gunplay a little more enjoyable in modern day here. Return to me. Another thing too, like you can stack ammunition over time, and so you won't have to always go back to buy ammunition. You can always swap to a different weapon to uh, use that ammunition if you get low on something else to build back up. And before I forget again, let's go ahead and get some buffs up. Heightened Senses is up so I can see through their invisibility. Uh, Fortitude is up. Looks good. And we'll do the same for Serena here once she gets a little more blood. You can see Call Lightning is really good now. Whenever you uh, 
use the ability, it strikes lightning based on the amount of levels you have. So if I had this at five, it would strike the ground five times. Really, really good. And you can use it while you're line of sight of the enemy. I don't remember if uh, these blood bags were on these machines before. I don't know if that's new with AR or not. I'll have to go back sometime and check the normal vanilla game to see if those are on there. Or ask Javakus later if you put them there. Because I never realized that until recently. Kind of an overpowered move in this place, and it's fun to use. Go ahead and get a couple of phantoms up here, which is a movement of the mind discipline that I got from Etrius. So you can basically use phantom weapons. Basically you equip the weapon that you want to use. And then you cast and it will use that, and then you can just use whatever weapon, other weapon that you want. Uh, as you can see there, my uh, phantoms just killed that guy through the wall. There is some collision things going on, as, I mean, obviously that's one of the biggest issues with ETMR, that if you hug a wall, you can actually shoot through the terrain because your model actually extends past the brush of the wall. Said here it succeeded in a precise shot. It's interesting. Another thing that a some people don't no, is if you actually hold down your alt key, oh, whoa, let me get rid of that guy real quick. Yeah, incendiary ammo is really strong. Uh, as I was saying, uh, if you hold down your alt key on your keyboard, you can fire even without a target. So, for example, well, I don't, I can't really do it, I don't have an enemy here, but let's say there's an enemy, you know, way down the hallway there, and since the weapon has a range, I can't really shoot it unless it, my character moves forward, but if I hold down ALT, it will actually fire the weapon wherever I want to fire. So even if it's like on a high terrain, like I can shoot up here on the wall. Kind of a overpowered thing that you can do at range if you're too far away, but it's like you can see it.
Got to be really careful when you see enemies with incendiary ammo because they will tear you apart. Also, I let my 42 drop. That's a big reason why that happened. Better get that back up and going here. So I don't die instantly. Kind of some interesting logic there. I think it might have ran out of ammo because um, it did just pick up ammo there it looked like. the I'm talking about the Phantom so that's actually kind of interesting. I did not know that Phantoms could pick up ammo. Uh, if you didn't know, you can uh, read up about the Society of Leopold and Father Leo Lacius if you click on these computers around the Society of Leopold if you're interested in the lore. Once again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and right click right in between these two. Uh, didn't get both of them, but did some damage there. Just another thing you can spread out your attack here. Hell yeah, I got one dollar. One dollar from that cardboard box. Another cool uh, side quest area here that could be a thing. And one thing I always thought was really interesting and that could hold a really good, good story behind it for like a uh, side quest is this scroll right underneath the bed here is a drawing out the beast scroll. Kind of interesting why that would be there. Thank you. 
cool little tactic you can do. You can peek out so they can see you and then hide back around the corner and set up with offensive stance on. As soon as they round the corner, all your guys will shoot them. That was actually a little bit interesting there. Um, I heard the respawn sound effect go off, like when if you let the uh, level respawn, it went off as soon as this guy died. I'll have to go back and relook at that, because it looks like we have two here, and I have my two here. So it looked like this mob here respawned as soon as this, you know, as soon as we killed him. That's uh, kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. Uh, we're going to drop some weapons here, make a little pile, and we'll come back for them later to vendor. I do like using the taser, it's pretty satisfying to use too, but the only problem with it is it has very low range and you can't shoot it from far away like I can with the pistol, like I was talking about earlier with the alt key. So I'm pretty much going to stick with the pistol for now. Uh, the revolver is really good as well, it does more damage than the pistol, but the magazine is only 6 shots where the pistol I believe is 12 shots. So, or, and this says 11, so there's one in the chamber, 11 in the gun, or in the magazine, so, yeah, 11 versus 6. Like right there, I used the alt key to take that guy out, because I was out of range. Another, you should really always use the alt key because even when you use it at close range, if you hold down the alt key and there's multiple targets, oh, my phantom's getting in the way. Oh, there we go. If you hold down the alt key, even if they're at short range and there's multiple targets, instead of the instead of stopping firing when you're killing one and having to shoot the other one, you can continue to shoot if you hold down the alt. So. It's good to always use alt if you're using weapons here, or firearms, not weapons, firearms.
So going through the Society of Leopold here, I've just been kind of thinking how the game changes, like the pace has changed as soon as you're back in the modern day, or you get to modern day. It goes from being a melee hack and slasher where you're just spamming click to being a little more tactical, moving around corners, uh, turning offensive and defensive stance on as things round corners to attack you. It's kind of a refreshing change from what we've been doing up to this point. And even like little things like holding down alt here and firing at this guy. If I could actually hit him. There we go. It's just like a lot of things that are a little different than what we are used to. The game's pace is actually really well done when it comes to that. Where we're at a point there at Castle Viserod when things are just falling over and dying instantly. Because our characters are so strong. And then we, as soon as that is going on, we get introduced to a whole new scenario new new way of playing the game it's, i really like it and it really makes you want to keep playing the game Here's some more of those blood bags I was talking about earlier, up here on these little racks. Not just the other clans, but against the antediluvians and Cain himself, and against God, in an ultimate battle they dare to hope to win. In their monstrous hubris, they see themselves as the true masters of all kindred and of all ancient power. In the last days after the deluge, the ancient Smitsi Vukodlai gathered demonic power by defiling all that was good and pure. He posed a threat to the ancient order of Cainites and was cast into deep torpor. But his loyal Smitsi followers conserved his power for centuries and sought to resurrect their dread lord. Refuse to carry any more spoil. I refuse to carry any more spoil.
<laughs> Another lure of flames. Oh man, these things are everywhere. I'll give that to Lily later on. Make another pile here. As you can see, there's... I mean, it's not as bad as Dark Ages, but... Um, the ammo situation where they stack is really helpful in all this crap. I didn't know there was enemies stuck in that box. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, there's uh, no collision here. This is uh, interesting. Huh. I am electing to use uh, blood pouches here instead of theft of vitae just because I do want the experience more so than being able to use theft of vitae and kill these things. It's just for this level though because obviously kindreds can be drained completely and it's not going to affect them. So yeah, I recommend using blood pouches in here.
Jesus. Huh, it looks like there may be a limit of trading ammo, because I'm pretty sure I've given her more than 86 ammo. That's, uh, that's interesting. Kristoff has 255, so there may be a limit. I'm not sure when it comes to giving in things to others. I'll have to see how much ammo that was I just gave in my, uh, you know, went up before I gave it to her. Gibbs. any more spoil. Attend me. I refuse to carry any more spoils. I refuse to carry any more spoils.
Okay, looks like we're just about done here. There's one thing I do want to check as soon as we get up to Leo Alatius here. Um, and I'll talk about something else and we'll be about done for the episode. Not too much going on here on the end of things. But, um, like I said earlier, kind of a nice change of pace. I'm kind of enjoying this. Fight Leo Alash and see what he has to say. Hello, filthy little kindred. I am Father Leo Alatius, and I have killed blood suckers like you for two hundred years. I have no wish to fight thee. Then give up your blood without a fight. It will make a tasty addition to my collection. Early generation kindred, vintage 12th century, 1140, a good decade for Vitae. I wish only to leave this place, but I will kill thee if I must. Your time is dead, boy. You can never fit into this world. You have no one, you are nothing. Let us deliver you in this alien land of eternal loneliness and pain. I did not endure for 800 years to die at thy behest. <gasps> okay, that's exactly what I thought. So he is, I cannot actually kill him. Before they, there was a choice you could make. You could either kill him or you could break his blood vats. It might be like a humanity check or something. Um, I mean, obviously... Serena can't, and she's really low humanity, but uh, it might be humanity check where if you're at a certain humanity level, you can't actually attack him anymore. And what he's doing here is, um, it's okay with me, actually, and I'll explain why here in a minute. <laughs> a little bit disturbing. Alright, Fire Leo Lacious is, I think he's pretty much a uh, mortal juiced up on Kindred Vitae. That or a ghoul, because he said he's survived for 200 years. Um, but if he is still considered mortal, I think how that went is actually quite suitable. Uh, I like to tell this a lot to people that in World of Darkness, a lot of people don't understand how powerful Kindreds are. They are more or less super natural, natural monsters. Um, when it comes to a human fighting a mortal, like one on one, there shouldn't be even a contest. Like mortals should not survive that encounter whatsoever. Like bullets are bee stings basically to a kindred. They're just minor annoyances. And in that situation, that should be the same with him smacking us with his cane or something. He should not be able to survive that encounter, if unless allowed to.
is all my reason thrown down. Surely my sleep hath made me mad, for if I'm yet sane, then the world has become a lunatic asylum. Towers of glass loom over the tallest cathedral spires. Juggernauts of steel hurtle through the streets of London. The cobbled Roman roads which once I walked as a young crusader are now fused into a single ribbon of black stone. And those roads are clogged with night-walking Londoners, heedless of the danger from the vampires among them. Are they so emboldened by the phantom torches which pierce the night and stab my eyes? Surely my world has died, and all I love lies buried with it. All right, and I believe that will conclude episode 9 of Age of Redemption 2017. We've made it to the streets of London, and next time it looks like we'll be moving through the plot and going into the Setite Temple to deal with Lucretia. Spoiler alert. We'll also have a lot of fun with some cool cutscenes coming up with uh, Pink, as well as the mugger down here pretty soon. We'll save that for next episode, though. Uh, that is all for this episode. We'll see you next time. Talk to you later.